January food prices up five tenths of a percent compared to December, 10 percent compared to a year ago. And I mentioned earlier the price of a dozen eggs up 70 percent year over year. Joining us right now is New York Congressman and member of the House Financial Services and Foreign Affairs Committees, Michael Lawler. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. You what can well, you Maria. do in your position to uh, alleviate this massive pressure on people that is eating into their wages? Well, I don't know if the Biden administration is intentionally misleading or just delusional, uh, but the reality is that with the consumer price index up 5.4 percent year over year, uh, as you mentioned, grocery bills up 10 percent, energy prices up 8.7 percent, people are hurting. Uh, and so the first thing we absolutely need to do is rein in government spending. Uh, I think the, the Biden administration has increased spending by over $5 trillion in just two years. Uh, obviously, our national debt now at, at $31 trillion. Uh, and this is part of the big discussion that's going on in Washington uh, tied to the debt ceiling and why Speaker McCarthy uh, has been insistent that any lifting of the debt ceiling is tied to long-term spending reforms. Uh, and so we need to rein in government spending. But, you know, one of the things I talked about during the campaign is the need to increase domestic production of energy. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to bring down costs, we need to increase energy production here in the United States. We cannot be relying on foreign governments, uh, especially uh, as we see the crisis going on with China uh, and Russia, uh, the Russian invasion in Ukraine. Uh, we need to be energy independent, and that is critical to our economy and our ability to grow our economy here in the, in the United States. It's, it's a great point. On, on the spending um, boundaries, cuts, whatever you want to call it, going into the debt ceiling slugfest that is sure to come, uh, is there any movement there? I mean, you had the CBO release uh, the estimates of, of, of uh, when the usual raft of extraordinary measures run out. We're still waiting on a budget from this White House and Congress. Yeah, look, I, I think obviously, as is often the case in Washington, uh, things move at a, at a snail's pace. But, um, you know, I do think there has been some progress. Uh, obviously, Speaker McCarthy went to the White House uh, a few weeks ago, sat down with the president. Um, and our conference has been very unified on this point. The Biden administration and the president uh, must recognize that they are no longer in a situation where they have one-party control of Washington and that they have to negotiate in good faith uh, with the speaker to make progress. As I've said from the very beginning, we are going to lift the debt ceiling. We are going to pay our previous debts incurred, but we must have spending reform tied to it. And if you look historically, any major spending reforms uh, have occurred in concert with lifting the debt ceiling. And including uh, in 2011, when Joe Biden was vice president of the United States and negotiated uh, on behalf of the Obama administration to do just that. Right. So this is nothing new. And I think the, the president needs to come to the table in good faith uh, so that we can do the business of the American people yeah. and move forward. But Lee Carter. So, Congressman. The American people agree with you, right? They, they are concerned about the inflation. They're concerned about the economy. Uh, they're concerned about spending. Um, and yet, when it came to the midterm elections, Republicans didn't have the surge that they expected um, in many ways because what we heard from voters was that they weren't sure that Republicans had a plan to do anything different. So can you tell me, outside of cutting spending, what is it that the American people can expect from Republicans to do to improve the economy, to improve inflation, that they can start feeling uh, some relief immediately? Well, we're already doing it. You know, the first bill we uh, we passed was to eliminate the 87,000 new IRS agents and employees. Yep. Uh, one of the second bills that we passed was uh, to create the Select Committee on China. China is our greatest geopolitical foe. They are our greatest threat economically. Uh, and in order for us to be on strong financial footing going forward, we need to be enacting policies that continue to make the United States competitive yep. against China and the Chinese Communist Party. So we are, we are in the process of advancing our commitment to America, uh, the, the, the platform that all of us ran on yeah. and won on. 
Uh, and the reality is that we do have a Republican majority. It may not be as, as big as anticipated, but we have one. Congressman, and we are moving forward with our agenda. Real quick, we just showed the numbers in terms of trade with China. Obviously, we are buying much more uh, from China than they are buying from us. There is a deficit uh, with uh, China. And I want to know if this is a lever that you're going to pull to push back on, um, on, on all of these provocations. I'm talking about China's most favored nation status. Is that something to change? I mean, you've got new reports that say intelligence officials were tracking that Chinese spy flight since it lifted off the southern coast of China at the end of January. And, and Congressman, it still was able to travel throughout the country all the way up to South Carolina before getting shot down. John Ratcliffe was on this program uh, just this week talking about the potential payload that was in that balloon. And yet we still have most favored trade status with China. Look, I think everything needs to be on the table, and that is in part what this committee, this select committee on the competition between the Chinese Communist Party and the United States is going to look at. The economic challenges, uh, including things like intellectual property theft and uh, currency devaluation uh, and trade. And I think we need to examine all of it. I think we need to look at, for instance, uh, normalizing relations uh, with Taiwan. Uh, and obviously, that is not going to uh, make the Chinese happy. But you know what? Uh, they are uh, provocating. They are uh, making threats against our yep. country, our homeland, our sovereignty. Uh, and we need to take it serious. And I think the Biden administration needs to join us in Congress in recognizing the serious threat that the Chinese pose. Yeah. Well, so far, we haven't heard that from this president. Congressman, we'll keep a spotlight on it. We so appreciate your time this morning. Thank you.